Today we are talking about tailoring your Sage 300 system. Before I start, I'd like to just run through a, a few key facts about ORCID. First of all, we have uh, over 5,000 sites. They're uh, scattered in over 60 countries around the world with, a, on average, two modules per site. These modules are deployed by and supported by over 400 Sage business partners around the world, and we're based in Sydney, Australia. Over the years, we've received over 10 industry awards for our work and um, development efforts, and this has culminated in 13 integrated modules for Sage 300. And we kicked off our business in 1993, which means we're now just over 25 years old. We're all about improving efficiency and productivity, and our modules fall broadly into the following five categories. Collaboration and intelligence, automation and productivity, tailor your system and integration, streamlining financial processes, and operations management. So the first category, collaboration and intelligence, consists of Info Explorer, our uh, business intelligence tool, notes, our context-sensitive notes for Sage 300 and document management link, which provide documents in a context-sensitive fashion for Sage 300. Automation and productivity consists of process scheduler and report runner. Process scheduler to schedule those uh, recurring processes and report runner to uh, enable you to automate along with process scheduler, but also provide easy access to both and secure access to both crystal reports and financial reports, general ledger financial reports. Extender, which we'll be running through in some detail today, allows you to customize Sage 300. And along with data views, which flatten optional fields for you to make reporting a whole lot easier, and optional tables, which allow you to record information around multiple dimensions within Sage 300, complete the area that we're going to be focusing on today. The two other areas that I'm not going to go through in any detail, streamlining financial processes consists of EFT processing, inter-entity trade, and inter-entity transactions, which are both for the uh, multi-company or multi-entity environment. Inter-entity trade, if you have entities within a group trading with each other, and inter-entity transactions, where you may have one or more entities transacting on behalf of other entities. So you're needing to automate processes between the entities via loan accounts. EFT processing is our most popular module, and that is to assist with funds transfer, both on the accounts payable and accounts receivable side, and the North American payroll side as well now. Lastly, operations management, which consists of return material authorizations and bin tracking. Bin tracking for the scenario where you need to keep a track of items at the bin level within Sage 300 locations or warehouses. So today, our key focus will be on those first three categories, collaboration and intelligence, automation and productivity, and tailoring your system. And you'll see how a combination of all these modules can be used to very effectively tailor Sage 300. Tailoring Sage 300 is very similar to sourcing new clothes. It can be done at different levels. So on the clothes front, you could make do. So here you'd be buying perhaps a pair of tracksuit pants, a caftan with a generic fit that doesn't need any changing, and you would just be using those clothes as they are. You could be making the body fit the clothes. This is more extreme, where you buy the clothes and then make your body fit those clothes with the uh, assistance of frequent visits to the gym, employing a personal trainer, or perhaps even seeking some surgical assistance. The next level, the most expensive level, is bespoke tailoring, where you're making clothes for your body. 
and this is generally the most expensive option but you will end up with a suit let's say which fits you perfectly and fourthly a uh, an approach which sits somewhere in the middle is uh, making the clothes fit the body so here you might be buying your suit off the rack and you may be taking that to a tailoring service to get the waist taken in and the sleeves shortened and tailoring sage 300 is much the same sort of thing making do you're just using the system out of the box without any form of customization Making the body fit the clothes is where you're using Sage 300 and adapting your own processes, the company's processes and uh, methods of operation, adapting them to Sage 300 without any form of customization. The next approach where you're actually getting a system developed for you from the ground up is obviously the most expensive approach, but at the end of the day, you'll end up with a, a system that works exactly the way you want it to work. And lastly, which is the approach most people would take, would be to take an existing system and adapt or customize or tailor that system to your exact requirements. Now, which modules should you be considering if you're looking at some level of bespoke tailoring and also integration? The three modules which stand out are extender and optional tables for the tailoring side and extender once again for integration. Now extender allows you to monitor specific fields, log changes, generate alerts, call external applications. It allows you to perform enhanced validation, restrict access to sensitive fields, develop custom screens, and create custom tables that all form part of your Sage 300 database. So all these customizations reside in the database, and if you back your Sage 300 database up and then restore it later on, the customizations go along with that backup and restore. Secondly, looking at optional tables, which allows for custom multi-dimensional data structures within your Sage 300 database. It's very well suited to holding budget and forecast data, which can be maintained in Microsoft Excel using the included spreadsheet add-in. And lastly, in terms of integration, Extender allows you to seamlessly integrate with external systems, exchanging and presenting information where it's needed, and all, most importantly, in real time. Extender allows you to interact and change or adapt the business logic of Sage 300 at the business logic level and now at the screen level as well. The importance of being able to work at the business logic layer cannot be overemphasized. You could, for example, put in some additional validation, let's say around the customer credit limit, and uh, only allow certain people to make changes above a certain dollar value, and that logic would then be enforced no matter how you accessed that information within Sage. So you may be updating your credit limit from the standard Visual Basic or classic user interface to Sage 300, or you might be using the web interface. You might be importing new credit limits, or you might indeed be working with macros. If you'd put in additional business logic, that would need to be adhered to as if it had been put in there by Sage themselves when they developed that business logic. So allowing you to adapt or tailor Sage 300 at a very detailed level. What we can now do as well is work at a higher level where you can adapt or change existing screens without needing to recompile those screens, the OCXs, which is very important in terms of upgrades and putting product updates in place. You're not having to do any form of recompiling of screens to make sure that everything works. So Extender is letting you not only customize these different areas, but also allowing you to keep people 
informed via alerts and logs. So as something changes within Sage 300, allowing Sage 300 to alert certain people or kick off custom processes. So enabling tailoring in real time as something is changing, about to change, so you can stop things from happening, or once things have changed, go off and, for example, update a website, allowing for uh, real-time integration. We can, through scripts, and we're using the programming language Python for these scripts, you can then create this automation, validation, and customization, and can indeed create new screens and processes and workflows, all focused on tailoring Sage 300 to your exact requirements. In addition to that, entire modules can be created with underlying tables as well, or views. So if you need additional data within Sage 300, what you could do is create your own views within Sage, which will then just form a part of the Sage 300 database and will dump and load. So looking at some screenshots of Extender, on the top left-hand side, what we have is a table that is being, or view that is being created within Sage. In this case, we're creating a table to record net promoter scores for customers. And uh, we've got it keyed on the customer number, and we've then got survey dates and scores and, and comments. And along with this, when you do create your own new view, the system will then go off and create a custom screen for you to enable you to enter data into this new view of yours. It's just like any other Sage 300 table and has all the required metadata, making crystal reports, for example, quick and easy, if you, even if you are switching between different databases. And this screen over here, which is generated for you automatically, is generated in Python, has the same look and feel as Sage 300, and can be further customized and tailored to meet specific requirements. And on the right-hand side, what we have is uh, some additional business logic or validation logic, which has been put into the customer view. And the logic over here in Python is saying that if the user is admin, they can enter a credit limit up to the value of 20,000 and everybody else can only enter a credit limit up to 10,000. And what then happens with this uh, script applied to the customer view via extender is if somebody then tried to enter a credit limit which is out of the bounds of what is allowed, an error message would be generated within the st standard Sage error stack, either from your VB screens, your new web screens, or uh, if you are importing data or running a macro over the top, it would be as if the underlying Sage 300 module had rejected this. So here you're able to change the way Sage 300 is working quickly and easily. Over here, what we have is something else Extender is doing in the background, can optionally do in the background, and that is do logging for you. So over here, we had asked Extender to keep a track of the credit limit. And here you can see what the old and new values are in each case. And secondly, the on hold flag to see who was changing the flag from off hold to on hold and when they did it. And this can be accessed through a hotkey on the screen that you're, you're looking at. So very quick and easy access to this detailed security order trail, which can be very important from a security perspective. Another use of Extender, and this is a newer feature where we can now change screens as well and do this without needing to recompile the Visual Basic OCXs, which is very important in terms of making product updates and upgrades 
that much more seamless. And the examples I have here are the ability to add new buttons for functionality. So here we've added a button which will allow you to print and email, in this case an order. We can add new fields. So here we've added a new date control. We can add new tabs. So over here we've got additional tabs where you could then be recording new information. We can change finders, so both on the at the header level and the detailed level, so you can change the, the operation of those finders. And another example where we can hide fields as well, so the field that was here is no longer visible. Now moving on and seeing how we can use Extender in conjunction with our Notes module. Our Notes module gives you the ability to put in notes alongside any information or data you're looking at in any specific screen. So in this example, we're looking at the OE shipment screen, and what it's showing us is notes relating to that screen. It's also actually showing us some files, and that's where document management link comes in. So in the bottom right hand corner, you can see a number of PDFs containing invoices relating to this customer. What we have here as well is the interplay and use of notes and extender, providing you with extended or conditional notes. So in this case, what we have is a note on the right hand side here, listing all outstanding orders relating to this particular customer. And from here, I can drill down into any of these orders if need be. If there were no outstanding orders, well, nothing would appear in that note. Secondly, we're looking at the uh, accounts receivable aging, once again, generated by Extender. And Extender here is in real time, going off and pulling back the aging based on Sage's uh, business logic and views around aging. And uh, once again, if there are balances as there are here, it's easy enough to drill down into those balances and into the underlying invoices themselves. The third one we have here is a note once again created by Extender, in this case telling us who changed the credit limit last. All these notes can pop up automatically, can be configured for specific users and specific screens. And this little icon over here with the lines on it is showing us whether there are notes associated with this screen or not, and whether any notes in fact exist. The envelope over here provides us with the ability to send a link to colleagues around specific data and specific screens. So for example, if I was looking at the shipment entry and needed additional information from a colleague, I could click on that envelope and it would then open up an email which I could then send to somebody with my question. And when they received that email, they'd simply need to click on the link and it would then take them through to Sage 300 and then through to the specific screen and this data on the screen. Another use of Extender, but this time in conjunction with Process Scheduler, because what we're doing here is periodically interrogating the Sage 300 database for exceptions. So these tailored exceptions can then be sent through to the appropriate people for them to deal with. So on the left-hand side here, the inventory manager may be receiving this particular alert, telling him that inventory is low in certain areas and is being sent an email with a link which is going through to the item location details so he can assess exactly what needs to be done in order to attend to this exception. And on the right hand side, on the collections management side, the person responsible for collections is receiving an email as and when a customer exceeds their terms and become overdue. And what they can then do instead of having to navigate their way through Sage 300 and the Sage 300 uh, uh, menu system, 
They can simply click on the link. If they're not logged into Sage 300, they'll need to log on, but it would then take them directly through, in this case, to the customer inquiry screen, where they could see exactly what the issues were and what needs to be done in order to follow this overdue invoice or invoices up. Moving on now to optional tables and how we can use optional tables to tailor Sage 300. And optional tables are generally used in scenarios where you need to put information into Sage 300, but there's no spot for it. And often this is the case with detailed budgeting and forecasting around the subsidiary ledgers. So in this example over here, what I have is a budget was uh, required by customer and item. So the key here is that optional tables are allowing us to hold information relating to a number of different dimensions or areas within Sage 300. So you may be recording a budget by item category, salesperson, and inventory location. Or you might be doing something at the general ledger level by general ledger account and other criteria. In this case, what we're looking at is customer and item. And what we've decided we need to record and share is a budget cost, a budget margin, and a budget value. And having set that up in these two screens over here, we then have the ability to enter this information and share it. Uh, within Sage 300. So here we're looking at the fiscal year and period, the budget cost, the quantity, and the margin. And we're doing that by customer and item. Or we could be doing that through an Excel spreadsheet. And we could be using the included Excel add-in to write that information back into Sage 300 once we're happy with it. So over here, once again, what I have on my rows over here are the customer and the item. I've then got the sales values by month and year. I then have further to the right in the spreadsheet, my associated margins and values and, and costs. And once I'm happy with it, it just requires me to uh, click a button to write that information back into Sage 300. And that is achieved through uh, the use of form additional formulas introduced by the add-in, which then allow this information to be written back into Sage 300. Moving on now to collaboration and which modules should be you be considering where you're tailoring the collaboration component of Sage 300. Now Notes lets you bring procedural instructions, images, links, annotations, and more into Sage 300 in a context-sensitive fashion. Extended Notes allows you to combine Notes and Extender, and you can, can trigger a script to create a dynamic and or conditional note on the fly. And thirdly, Document Management Link which expands notes, the notes concept further still, turning it into a document management interface. Relevant documents are available for reference whenever required, all without needing to leave Sage 300. So here we are tailoring Sage 300 with Extender once again and notes. And we may be using on the order front, we may be automatically creating emails. On the logistics front, we might be providing pertinent information and links to the operator. So in the top left-hand corner over here, we're looking at the order entry screen, and we're looking at customer number 1200 and item number A11030, our uh, fluorescent desk lamp. And on the right-hand side, uh, or in the middle of the, the screen, we have our note box. And the top note is associated just with customer 1200. And it's telling us when the credit limit was last changed. And that credit limit information was put there, uh, the change information was put there by, by extender. The next note down, we're looking at customer 1200 and item A11030. So we're putting in information specifically related to this customer 
and that item. So if we were to scroll down the detailed area onto the next item, that note would change. And if there was a note associated with customer 1200 and that next item, A11050, that would then appear. And at the bottom over here, what we have is a note which relates specifically to this item. And what it's got is just some information relating to it. And you can see a bit of the graphic, the picture of that, that item. Moving further off to the right, examples of additional conditional or extended notes. Producing tailored information here for the operator to see. We're seeing uh, shipment entry information, aging information, and changed credit limit information, all generated in real time by Extender to provide the current scenario. And the bottom over here, what we have is a note on the right hand side, which is providing us with additional functionality. In this case, allowing us to uh, print an invoice and also to print an email, an invoice. And that is being done through one of the boxes within the notes area, making it another extended note. And now seeing how we can tailor Sage 300 with document management link, what we've got over here is the accounts payable invoice entry screen, and we're looking at vendor number 1200 and invoice number 123. And what we've done is tailored Sage 300 to show this particular invoice, INV123, as in this case, both a doc file and a PDF, which can then be double clicked on to have a look at. The next box down is showing us all the invoices associated with customer number or vendor number 1200. The third box is showing contracts associated with vendor 1200, and the fourth box is showing project related documents. So as you can see, we can put different types of documents and show those to the operator in a context sensitive fashion. So they're getting to see the notes that they need, which they need to see when required. Document management link can either be used with the documents residing on a file share on a local local area network, or can be used with a number of cloud services out there, including Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and the like, and works with SharePoint both locally and the hosted version of uh, SharePoint on uh, Office 365 as well. Next, we look at uh, tailoring your business intelligence and reporting requirements, and lastly, your process automation requirements. Now, business intelligence means different things to different people, and typically different companies require different uh, reporting and analysis because they're all operating in different ways. So Info Explorer provides the power of intuitive slice and dice analytics with drill through to Sage 300 at a fraction of the price that a number of BI solutions out there cost. It allows you as well to review and refine budgets and forecasts from within Info Explorer. So this is all happening from within your analysis environment and allows you to write those budget and forecasts back into Sage 300 using the write back feature of Info Explorer. So some key takeaways here with Info Explorer uh, are the fact that you can drill into the underlying Sage 300 screens. And secondly, if you are doing budgeting and forecasting, it's very useful to be able to do that from within the tool that you're used to analyzing your data and you can then have it written back into Sage 300. You may be working with general ledger budgets, in which case they would be going through to the general ledger, or you might be working with inventory forecasts. So that information might make its way back through into the IC module, or you might be working with a, a number of different dimensions and you might be writing the information back into uh, Information Manager's Optional Tables module, which I uh, briefly ran through with you earlier. Report Runner allows you to organize your Crystal or Sage 300 financial reports with role-specific menus and default parameters to make rerunning them a breeze. 
And if used in conjunction with Process Scheduler, allows you then to automatically distribute those reports at the uh, frequency you require. And Data Views, which simplifies and speeds up the report writing and execution process further by creating and maintaining database views that will turn your Sage 300 optional fields into simple columns. So rather than having to dig into the optional fields data structure with sub-reports and the like, you can just pick up the optional fields as additional columns within the reporting environment. And lastly, process automation with process scheduler, which will handle numerous things, including day-ins, integrity checks, imports and exports, database dumps, postings, distribute cubes for you as well. So Info Explorer cubes, uh, crystal reports, and financial reports. Looking at Info Explorer, what we're able to do is slice and dice our data. So over here, what we're looking at is salesperson, customer group, and item number. And what we can do is drag and drop these dimensions uh, on and off the analysis area. And we can drill successively down into additional levels of detail and can then drill through to Sage 300 as and when required. We can also do traffic light reporting, so change the color of percentages in this case as to whether they're, they're good, bad, or, or somewhere in between. And what we can do is from within this interface, not only analyze the data we're looking at, but also enter data, typically budgets or forecasts, and then write that data back into the underlying ERP system into Sage 300. And as I mentioned, we can also drill into specific screens within Sage 300. So here I'm looking at the, a fluorescent desk lamp and I'm drilling into the underlying screen within Sage 300. We can also do dashboard graphs and the like. Report Runner is allowing us to provide a easy to use interface, uh, both menu system and also um, defaulting certain values to enable people to get access to the reports they need when they need them with the use of enhanced security to, to ensure that only the right people have got access to the right reports. But we can do that with uh, both general ledger financial reports, where I can choose one or more reports to be executed and uh, either sent to people or uh, emailed to people or printed at once, and crystal reports. So over here, I have uh, custom AR reports, custom AR aging items report and the like. And in setting all of this, in tailoring this environment to the end user's requirements, we can set up specific screens which look just like any other Sage 300 screen with finders, date pickers and the like, which look and feel just like Sage 300 rather than the, in this case, the crystal interface, which, um, which doesn't. And here we're looking at data views and how data views can be used to uh, tailor, simplify the tailoring of reports and cubes for Sage 300. So on the left-hand side over here, what I have is uh, optional fields relating to accounts receivable, customers, national accounts, and customer groups. There are a large number of them. And traditionally, it's difficult to report on these optional fields just due to the way optional fields are handled in the background and their underlying data structure. And what data views will let you do is uh, let these optional fields appear just as additional columns, just like, for example, with the uh, customer table where you would get the, the customer's name and address fields. These optional fields will just appear as additional fields or columns. So over here, these uh, optional fields, when looking at them in crystal reports, they're just appearing as additional columns, additional fields, there's no need for subreports or complex joins. And over here, we're looking at the same information in SQL Server, where you can see these optional 
fields just appearing as additional columns. And on the left here, much the same sort of thing with Info Explorer, where you're choosing which optional fields you want for your cube to analyze customer data. Here we're looking at using Report Runner and Process Scheduler to tailor the report production process and the delivery of those reports to the appropriate people within the organization. So on the right hand side over here we can specify when reports are to be scheduled and what those reports are to be. And uh, on the left hand side here we have the various menus showing the report runner reports that, that can be run, both crystal and financial reports, and once again how they can be scheduled. And uh, here's a snippet over here of a an email that somebody may be getting, in this case with an age trial balance, an AR age trial balance with the relevant information in it. And that those emails, the content of those emails, can be tailored again to, to meet the organization's specific requirements. Reporting is a very important area for most organizations, and hence I've spent a bit of time showing how we can use uh, a number of ORCID tools to provide the right information to the right people at the right time. And now talking about tailoring standard recurring processes to run automatically with the use of Process Scheduler. Process Scheduler lets you do a large number of things. And from checking the uh, integrity of your modules, of your various different modules, doing dumps and loads for backup and other purposes, through to ref refreshing um, cubes, Info Explorer cubes, or crystal reports, uh, financial reports, and sending them off to people, through to uh, running other schedules, doing a, a service pack audit, so um, checking to see what um, what's currently loaded on the uh, various servers and sending the right uh, that information to the people who, who need it through to um, checking disk space. And uh, this is a critical issue, making sure that SQL Server, for example, has got enough disk space to, to operate effectively and running extender scripts. So earlier on, I showed you some emails, um, examples of emails which are being sent to various people in relation to uh, data that had changed within Sage 300 alerts, in other words. Uh, to the fact that data had changed. In the one instance, uh, customers had now uh, gone over their, their due dates and needed following up through to inventory that um, was low, low in stock and needed to be um, reordered. We can do a, a large number of uh, posting processes, running day ends. Um, we can load databases, copy databases. Um, run other programs uh, in both await and, and no wait mode. So uh, you can run a number of programs concurrently once other things had happened, along with macros and uh, dealing with um, consolidations. So if you do need to transfer data through to a consolidation database for reporting purposes, you can tailor Sage 300 so that that all happens for you what we'll do now is jump into Sage 300 and see some of these things in action. Now having a look at uh, document management link notes and extender in action uh, in a tailored environment and I'm using ORCID standard sample data which is up on our website and available for download so that's up on www.orchid.systems and if I go through into, for example, shipment entry, so this is in within order entry, and I'll just show you um, how the notes and document management link areas have been customized or tailored through the use of Extender. So just picking up a uh, transaction with some appropriate data in it. And uh, here I'm having a look at uh, Mr. Ronald Black. It's showing me all the outstanding orders 
relating to Ronald Black, along with the aging information and uh, other note information down here on the right hand side, including some uh, documents as well further down, which is, has come through via the document management link module. So all of this is context sensitive, so it's only showing information pertaining to the screen and will only be showing up to people who have been given the authority to look at this information. Each one of these is a customized area using or tailored area uh, using Extender. And um, with this information, you can then go further and drill down into the underlying transaction. So over here, I've drilled on an order, order number one. And uh, this should then pull up the uh, related Sage 300 screen, along with additional notes and information relating to that order. So here that order is, and uh, you'll notice on the right hand side, it's showing me uh, uh, total sales for customer number 1200, Mr. Ronald Black. Uh, other information, which is more pertinent to um, the order entry screen, customer invoices this time. But what I'm also seeing here, which is uh, very useful for somebody entering orders on the phone, for example, is um, how much of a particular item has been sold to this customer over a period of time. So here we're seeing customer 1200 and item uh, A11030, we've sold 138 at a cost of $11,658, and um, the average price, 84. And this has been calculated on the fly by Extender through a script and has been presented through this uh, window. If I click on the next one down, it then changes. And uh, I'm now looking at uh, fluorescent bulbs, and uh, we've sold 83 of those at a total of $809, giving us an average price of uh, $10 per, per item. So as you can see, what we're doing here is um, tailoring what people can see as they're working away with um, Sage 300. What I could have shown here on the right hand side is um, some action buttons. So maybe to uh, uh, print and email a particular order or, or invoice that I'm currently look at, looking at. And what I can also do is now customize, have Extender customize the screen itself with additional buttons, uh, tabs, and uh, hiding and showing additional fields if required all through uh, not having to uh, uh, amend and recompile OCXs, but via an extender script which would sit on top of the screen and uh, would not require recompiling every time you do a, an upgrade or, or an update to your system. So now, how have we achieved this? Let's go and have a look at uh, some of the related setup. So if I go into uh, initially, I'll have a look at Information Manager, and the Information Manager suite includes Document Management Link and Notes. So if we go through to the Setup area and Options, what I've got here is a list of those screens uh, and that information that will result in a pop-up appearing on the right-hand side. If I don't have a Roto ID here at all, as I don't over here, it will pop up any time a screen uh, is called up with the name vendor number in it. And uh, in this case, it will then, then pop up. If I don't have a field over here, but a Roto ID, it will pop up with uh, instructions in all cases if they exist. So this is great for uh, uh, putting additional instructions, online help and the like, tailored around a particular implementation that you may be in the process of doing. So in this area, what we can do is set up notes. We can set up documents as well for document management link and here they're associated with network folders. 
And uh, what we can do is then have scripts as well. And the examples I was giving you or showing you were generally in relation to these uh, scripts that have been uh, set up. Now, before I leave the information manager area, what I'd like to do is just show you some uh, info set codes. And this is the area that we would use to set up new optional tables to hold information. So we were talking earlier on about um, having an optional table which held customer and item information and uh, keeping a budget at a combination of customer and item. And what we're doing here is defining what dimensions we want to work with. And then on the next tab, what we'd be doing is having a look at uh, what dollar values we want to have. So in this case, we've got a quantity, a cost, and a, a sales value. And uh, having set this up, I can then start working with this either through the supplied screens or via the Excel add-in. The other thing I can do in this area is um, set up data views. And here is an example of the one I was showing you earlier on. So over here, what we're saying is that we want to do uh, have a view, a SQL view associated with customers so that we can more easily report on optional fields which relate to customers. And what will essentially happen is uh, Information Manager or the Data Views component of Information Manager will then create the underlying SQL view for you and will create it on the database, which will then allow you to do that reporting so much more easily. Uh, the big advantage here is this is contained within Sage 300. It will dump and load. So um, you're not losing those SQL views if you do transfer the data from one server to another, or if you're backing it up via DB dump for backup purposes. Now, Moving on to Info Explorer, our BI tool. Here I'm looking at a cube which is uh, showing information pertaining to customers and items and, and the like. So over here I'm looking at uh, customer groups and customer numbers, but what I can now do is start dragging in additional information, item numbers, for example. And uh, now I'm looking at that information at the item level as well. I may not be in that interested in groups, so I can exclude that. Now, a key thing here is our ability to uh, drill into the underlying Sage data so uh, and screen. So over here, if I'm interested in having a closer look at, let's say, Mr. Ronald Black, I can drill through to, for example, the uh, customer activity screen. And uh, what this will now do is fire up uh, Sage's customer activity screen, and I can then have a closer look at that. And it will, of course, give me all the notes that I have associated in this case with this customer. The next area that I would uh, like to have a quick look at is Extender itself and where we hold information. So with Extender and the setup area, what we can do is uh, uh, create custom tables and uh, then uh, enter data into them. So if I go into custom tables, for example, we had a look at the Net Promoter Score earlier on, and this is a screen here where that uh, particular table was, uh, was created. In terms of the scripts themselves, this is where uh, we can uh, um, check scripts out. We can upload them. Now, note here that all these scripts are actually contained within the database. So the great thing is that if you back up your Sage 300 database, you know that all your customizations are going with you. But if we now have go off and have a look at the uh, credit limit, for example, let's go in and uh, have a look at that that particular script. Here it is over here where it's talking about the 
admin user being able to enter a credit limit up to 20,000 and uh, everybody else can only enter a credit limit up to 10,000 and here the error messages are that are to come through if those criteria are not uh, are not met. So with Sage 300 and Extender we can write entire modules and uh, the neat thing is we can uh, simply export those modules out and import them elsewhere. And this is done database by database. So you may have a group of companies running Sage 300 and each company may need different uh, uh, customizations, different uh, uh, types of tailoring done to them, and that can be quite easily achieved with, with Extender. So in summary then, what we've done today is um, had a closer look at how we can tailor Sage 300 using a number of different ORCID tools and modules, including document management link, notes, data views, Extender, and Info Explorer and optional tables. Uh, what we've focused on doing is showing how we could, uh, getting back to that analogy of, of buying clothes, is uh, think of Extender and these associated modules as a tailoring service. The means to take an initial product, could be a suit back in our analogy, and uh, use Extender and these other modules to tailor them tailor the uh, environment to exactly what your company needs. Be sure to have a look at our website for additional information around what I've uh, been through today. And uh, I'd encourage you to have a look at the extender scripts, the sample extender scripts we have up on the website, along with all the uh, cubes that we have for Info Explorer. In addition to that, in our knowledge base area, there is further information on how to get up to speed on Python if you are going to be looking at doing your own scripts.